Good evening. Welcome to Summitest CPA Australia Late Evening Talk. I'm Michelle, the Senior Coordinator of Summitest CPA Australia Program. Well, tonight we are glad to have Mr. Theodore Lai, the Regional Education Partnerships Consultant from the Singapore office. Um, Theodore, he will share with you the resources available for CPA program and how these resources help you get through the CPA Australia examination. Um, with us tonight too, another representative from the CPA Australia Malaysia office. Um, she will be here to address your queries on the CPA Australia program uh, later in the Q&A session. Let's welcome Theodore. Hi everyone and good evening. Uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, under normal circumstances, I would very much love to be with you guys uh, in Malaysia to be able to do this in person. Um, but, you know, we obviously live in the times that we do right now. And so I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you um, from Singapore. I think we are very grateful for technology as well. I'm um, very grateful to Sunway Test for the opportunity to come and spend a little bit of time to talk about the CPA program study essentials. Um, so I believe you should be able to see my screen in front of you. And what we're going to do this evening is to really talk about, okay, so I've signed up for the CPA program or I'm going to sign up for the CPA program. What does that mean for me? What will CPA Australia be providing for me as a student, okay? So I was telling the team earlier from Sunway Test that I've got about 102 slides. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, so don't worry. But, you know, please, I think there is a, a chat box that's available. Please feel free to ask questions. My colleagues in uh, Malaysia, my colleagues in Sunway Test will be able to feed me those questions. And I'll try my best to answer as many of them as I can. Okay, so without further ado, let's go forward. Let's see what we're going to have. Um, typically, I would ask this question. Okay, so of course, you know, for a lot of you, you will not be able to answer me directly. But I think these are questions that you can ask yourself. Why are you pursuing the CPA program? Are you trying to get to that next stage of your career? Are you trying to achieve a certain status in terms of adding um, certain alphabets behind your name? Or indeed, are you trying to improve your knowledge and your skills as an accountant? Okay, so not just a, a regular accountant. Well, accountants are known as bean counters in the past, but I think it, it goes a lot further than that. Okay, so we're not just trying to make sure that you can be an accountant and that you can count to more than 10. But really, we want to make sure that you are next level certified practicing accountant. Okay, so let's see. What do we do? Um, home truths. So what is the CPA program all about? Now, the CPA program, of course, is the main program that we have at CPA Australia. And we call that the CPA program. So it's flexible, it is self-directed, and it is self-paced. Now, what this means for a lot of us who are working right now is that, yes, Right now in Singapore, in Malaysia, it is 9.07 p.m. In Australia, in Melbourne, which is our home office, it is 12.07 a.m. In London, it is now 1 p.m. But because it is self-directed and because it is self-paced, it doesn't matter whether you are working at home. It doesn't matter whether you are a stay-at-home mom with three kids to look after. It doesn't matter whether you are a very busy person who's running your business, um, running three different online stores and stuff like that. It's okay because it is flexible. So you can do this at any time, you can direct your own learning. And we want to make sure that we provide the sufficient resources for you to make sure that you can feel that you are able to achieve this program. So it is certainly not a walk in the park, it's certainly going to be challenging, it is certainly going to be demanding, okay? It, it's not going to be easy. However, however, we are not trying to break you, okay? We want you to be successful, and every year, every single year, there are students in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Australia, who actually graduate with the Certificate of Excellence, meaning they actually get five out of six subjects, they get high distinctions, okay? So it is very possible. It is certainly very doable. Some people might choose to take a little bit longer. Some people might say, all right, yep, I've signed up with CPA, but I want to have the support of a teacher and that, of course, is where Sunway Test comes in. Okay, so I'm going to touch on that a little bit more. But for me, in my role in education, my role is to talk about our education resources. Okay, so I'm here to showcase that to you. I'm here to let you know that when you have enrolled with the CPA program, 
you have paid 3,000 ringgit. What exactly are you getting out of this enrollment? Okay, so we're giving you a lot more than just the exam. We're giving you loads of resources. We are now about four or five weeks into the semester, uh, perhaps even longer. And we hope that you are actively using the resources, but it is not too late. Okay, it is not too late to start. And we want to make sure that you set yourself up for success. Now, you have 24 hours in a day. I've got 24 hours in a day. And it's about how we discipline ourselves, how we focus, how we manage our time. And not just managing your 24 hours, but I, I talk a lot about managing your time because when you go to the examination, you have three hours and 15 minutes, okay? 195 minutes. We want to make sure that you are able to um, spend that time well, okay? Spend that time wisely to make sure that you are able to go through the entire exam. So I'll run through that with you. Um, and, I, and I think, sorry, I might have gotten the figure wrong earlier. I think for those who signed up earlier, it would have been about 2,500 ringgit instead of 3,000, okay? Yeah, so pardon me on that, those figures. So let's go on. Our essentials agenda. So what exactly are we going to cover today? So we want to make sure that we are able to tell you what to expect in the semester. We want to make sure that we go through the guided learning resources for you. And most importantly, that mastery and those tips for your examination success, okay? So I'm not going to be sharing any sample questions, but I'm going to tell you, okay, with all of these resources that are provided, with the support that you have from your lecturers in Sunway, how can we ensure that you have a good chance at being successful in your exam? Now, we will also introduce the four key steps to success in the CPA program, where we want you to move from learning to practice to feedback, to completing your studies. And then, of course, we will have some exam information, okay, in terms of um, how to effectively prepare for your exam. So what to expect from the CPA program? Now, this is what we are going to provide for you, okay? We want to make sure that you have all these important dates. Now, right now, we are already in the middle of March, so we hope that you are ready for that. But I'm going to jump to that portion on April the 5th, okay? Monday, April the 5th, that is the last day for you to ask your questions in the Ask the Expert Forum, okay? ATE Forum. Now, I, I want to assure you that this is not an automated forum, okay? This is not a digital forum where you get an automated answer. They ask you to press five, then they ask you to press four, and then they tell you press zero to wait for an operator. It's not that way. It's actually a human-run forum, okay? There are experts who answer questions on those forums, and there are lecturers who intentionally ask questions on those forums because when they are preparing their lectures, they might have gone through a certain portion that is a little bit tricky. So they want to make sure that, hey, yeah, this part is a little bit tricky. I want to make sure that my students are able to grasp those concepts. And so they ask questions. So even if you don't have any questions yourself, I would strongly encourage you, please take a look at Ask the Expert Forum because there are good questions on there. And there are people who answer those questions. Okay, so I'm one of the people who answers questions on that forum. And our promise to our candidates is that we will reply within two working days, okay, within 48 hours. So I would strongly encourage you, please take a look at the questions that are asked. And also, if you have questions yourself, please feel free to ask questions over there. Okay, so exam period from 7 April to 25th of April. That means that you have now about just three weeks to go before your exams. So please, if you haven't started using the resources that I'm talking about today, it's not too late, it's fine, but please get started, all right? So going on, planning for your exam. Have you scheduled your exam? I hope the answer is yes. And I'm sure most of you will be doing a computer-based exam. Now, I want to be the first person to say that at CPA Australia, this whole thing about computer-based exams is not something that we put in place because of COVID-19, okay? So I've been with the organization for a number of years now, and the computer-based exams actually predate me. So we have been doing computer-based exams for a long time. We work with an international exam provider by the name of Pearson. So Pearson has a system called Pearson VUE, v -U -E, and what this allows us to do is that you can do a computer-based exam either from the comfort of your own home, if you have a quiet environment, or you can choose to go to a physical test center. 
Okay, so let me draw an example from Malaysia since most of you are in Malaysia. Um, last semester, we had some issues with uh, MCO, right? The government announced MCO. All of us feel that, okay, we should abide by it. We should um, follow the rules. No problem, that's fine. We allow our students to be able to take exams from their own homes. So remember earlier, I mentioned that thing about being flexible. We want to make sure that as an organization, we set you up for that success. We don't want to hold you back just because you weren't able to go to an exam center. Okay, so that flexibility is something that we embody at CPA Australia, and we hope that you as candidates will also be able to do that. So schedule your exam, make sure it's the right format for you. And of course, we provide you a lot of digital learning resources. Now, all of you, when you enroll with CPA, you would have received a hard copy textbook, okay? About an inch thick, an inch and a half or whatever. But on top of that, we understand, we completely understand that now we live in a digital world. We want to be able to make sure that we have digital resources available. There is the electronic study guide, which we call the ebook. okay? So that's produced, of course, by our publication partner. Um, simulations for the relevant subjects, videos on exam expectations, study guide PDF. Now, all of the things that I'm saying here today, I'm not trying to sell to you, okay? All of these things have been included in your enrollment. Okay, you can log in with your CPA ID on My Online Learning, M-Y-O-L. That's our online LMS, okay? And all of you will be able to access all of this material without paying anything additional. Okay, so all included, please follow that and go into this thing called guided learning. Now, why do we call it guided learning? Remember earlier I mentioned that it should be self-directed. It should be self-paced, right? But we want to provide a guide for you to tell you, okay, week six of the semester, week seven of the semester, week eight of the semester, what do you expect? What sort of video tutorials are available? What sort of webinars are available? And okay, if you have already studied to this portion of the semester, should you then proceed to check your knowledge using the module quizzes? Or should you progress on to the practice exam? So all of these things are provided for you. And we know in Asia that our candidates, we like to practice a lot, right? We use the 10-year series and stuff like that. Now, when I first joined the organization a number of years ago, the Australians are completely lost in this concept of practicing, okay? They couldn't understand why do these students in Asia want to have so much practice? But we like it this way. So yes, I convinced them, I convinced the education team, and we now have loads of practice questions for you to be able to practice. And on top of that, we are very clear that it is insufficient for you to just be able to practice. You want to be able to practice using questions in the same format as your exam, okay? Now I say same format because we are not providing you the same questions. We're providing you answers in the same format, in the same instructional language. Now, when I say instructional language, I'm not talking about English or Mandarin or Bahasa, okay? I'm talking about the way we ask questions. So, for example, if CP Australia says to you, explain this or analyze this or compare this, what exactly are we trying to get from you? So, I would strongly encourage you again, on top of doing that guided learning, use the practice questions, okay? Use those practice questions to make sure that you are familiar with the way that we are trying to test your knowledge. Now, the A at the back of CPA stands for accountants, right? So we are very clear that we are not trying to test you for English. We are trying to test you for your accounting knowledge and for your ability to apply the accounting theory. Okay, so I mentioned that there are four different steps across the course of this semester. Step one, step two, step three and step four. And under each of those steps, we actually provide a whole list of things that are available for you. So when you are learning, you are at the very basic stage, right? Step one, you're still taking in all of that information from the study guide. Now, some people say, yeah, but when I read the study guide, I get very sleepy. Well, that's perfectly fine. So we provide for you short video tutorials. And by short, I mean one or two minutes, that kind of thing, okay? Short video tutorials, that can explain in a very short nutshell what are some of the key concepts that you need to get, okay? Then you move on, you learn, you need to practice, right? Practice makes perfect, okay? Everyone knows that statement. 
However, how do you get to that level of perfection? We want to make sure that you use the module quizzes, you use the mid-semester uh, practice test, and of course, there are some learning tasks as well. So depending on which subject you're enrolled with at, at Sunway Test or at CPA Australia, um, whether it's ENG or strategic management accounting, financial reporting, GSL, whatever, we have different resources available for each subject. So if you are enrolled in two subjects, when you log into my online learning, you will see those two subjects available. Now, some of you are also saying that, okay, yep, but I'm going to Sunway Test. How does my lecturer know what to teach? So I'll let you know that at Sunway Test, they also have access to the same material. And on top of that, we provide some additional tutor material, okay? Tuition um, slides for the lecturers, um, tuition notes for the lecturers to be able to use them in their teaching to help you along your journey, okay? Um, I'm also very proud to say that with Sunway Test, with Michelle and the team in Chilong and Nicole and all, we have been working for a long time together. Um, the lecturers are really good. I'm, I'm good friends with Siva as well. We've been um, together in Australia for a number of uh, times. And, you know, it's been great to be able to work with your faculty there. And how do we measure this thing called great, right? It's, I'm not just saying this because Sunway Test is our partner this evening. I'm saying this because we have hard statistics, okay? Semester after semester, we have lecturers who do well, meaning their students actually exceed the national pass rate of Malaysia, okay? So I, I'm not here to talk about some, some utopian um, feel-good thing where, you know, you might be able to do well. I'm telling you about the reality that with the support, you have a good chance of passing the CPA program provided you put in the work, okay? So learn, practice, yes, but then where does the teacher come in? The teacher provides you that feedback. So you do your practice, you do your module quizzes, you do your knowledge checks, you do your mid-semester tests, and okay, you got a certain score, but what happens next? That's where you need the lecturer to give you some feedback, right? And on top of that, we provide from our end, we provide web minutes on a weekly basis now, it's okay if you say that, yeah, I, I haven't seen any of those web minutes. Well, like I said earlier, it is not too late. You can still look back at all the web minutes from the past week and you can still view those web minutes. And last but not least, step four, that is when you will have your exam preparation web minute. That is when you will have your end of semester practice exams, okay? So I hope that I'm not talking too fast, but please, at any point of time, if you have questions, Please ask them and the team will feed them to me. Now, at the end, I will also be happy to take some questions from you guys. Okay, so when you log in, what exactly do you see? You log into my online learning using your CPA ID, using your password, and you say, okay, I'm taking this subject, ethics and governance. So I'm going to click into there and then I'm going to click into guided learning. Okay, so the second link from the top, make sure you disable your pop-ups and stuff like that. Go into guided learning. And then you will see that, okay, this is the new website that it brings you to. Um, Knowledge Equity is our online learning partner. And they are a partner of ours in Melbourne, Australia, where it's, it's our head office. Um, but on top of that, I'm also very pleased to say that this is not just a third-party company that we have contracted to create some fancy videos and some fancy lectures. Now, the people at Knowledge Equity, they are contributing authors to our textbook. Now, what this means is that they have intimate knowledge of what actually is going on because you have the textbook that is 700, 900 pages. What exactly are the key points that we are trying to pull out, okay? So with this guided learning, we hope to be able to walk you through that process. You start your course and straight away you see again, it shows you that four-step learning process, okay? Four steps over there that walks you through the course of the semester. We want to make sure that you set your results pledge, you set your study goal. Do you want to achieve just a pass mark, a credit, a distinction, or you want to go all the way up for high distinction? And if you are going there, what do you need to do to achieve that? Okay, so you set your goal and we want to make sure that we help you as much as we can to achieve that goal. Now, we can't guarantee you any success because at the end of the day, it's you who is going for the exam. I'm not going for the exam. So you have got to be able to perform as well, okay? So book your practice exams, go through your steps one by one, learn, 
practice, feedback, and complete. So step one, what are we talking about? Yes, I get it. Now we are already further in the semester. However, I have looked at the results analysis um, in terms of those of you who have logged in. And I know that some of you have not done it yet, okay? So it's not too late. Please start going in there. All of these things are provided for you. Start to prepare for your semester. Start to watch a lot of those short videos. So I'm telling you, these are really short, right? These are just a couple minutes. And so they're telling you, okay, after you have read this short video, then you need to read sections 1.1 to 1.8 on page 1 to 18 of your study guide, okay? So uh, immediately, you are seeing what I mean, right? We break it down into small bite-sized portion for you to drill in your focus. And why do I keep talking about the study guide? That's because it is open book, right? Open book, meaning you can bring your hard copy textbook into the exam, okay? So you need to make sure that you understand your textbook very well so that when the exam comes, you bring your textbook in, you know where to flip, you know where to refer, okay? So... One of the questions that your lecturer, um, Siva, she likes to ask me is, how do we tell the students to do indexing? Okay, so I'm going to run through that later on with you. So stay tuned, stay alert, and start to pay attention, okay? Step two is your practice. That's where we bring in your module quizzes. So in ethics and governance, for example, there are five different modules, and each module, we provide a quiz for you. And how we do that is in the form of your MCQs, 50 minutes, 25 questions. And the reason why we do that is because you allocate two minutes per question, okay? Now, remember I mentioned earlier about time management, right? We want to make sure that you manage your time well for the examination as well, okay? So start your quiz, go through each of the questions. You have 50 minutes. At the end, you submit and then you get your results, okay? So ah, uh, this person didn't do so well. Two marks upon 10 two marks upon 10 just tells you that you didn't do so well, right? There isn't any explanation. You need to get that feedback. So what we do is that we bring it one step further. We give you an explanation. So this is the question. Question seven, worth one mark, and there is an explanation at the bottom, okay? There is an explanation at the bottom. And that explanation is so important because if you have gotten it wrong, you need to know where you went wrong. And then next week in your class, you can ask your tutor. Okay, I, I hope that all makes sense to you. So it's not just about practice, getting the results, but next level. Remember, after step two, you want to go to step three, right? Getting that feedback. Okay, that's so important. So step three, getting that feedback, ethics and governance, module one. And after you have gotten that feedback, you need to get some sort of a summary, right? So in that summary, that is where we bring in a lecturer. In this case, the guy on the screen, his name is Courtney. He's one of the lecturers uh, who have written the textbook with us as well. And he is given a 45 minute, 45 minute lecture on what exactly you should cover in module one of ethics and governance, okay? So remember I mentioned earlier, self-directed, right? So you're at home. You want to do it on your own time, whether you want to do it at midnight, whether you want to do it on Saturday morning when the kids are at your uh, enrichment classes, whether you want to do it quietly during your lunch break. It's all up to you because all of these resources are constantly available online. Okay, And of course, you can use the slides if you want to. You can print out the PDFs as well. So after that, you find that, okay, this guy has talked for 45 minutes. I need to ask some questions. So that's when you go into Ask the Expert Forum, that's the green button on the top right-hand corner. And last but not least, you enter into step four, okay? So you complete, meaning you need to start to prepare for your exam. So these are all of the different things that are available, right? Through the course of the semester, we want to make sure that you are moving along and progressing well. You get to your mid-semester test you get to your practice exam, and you get to your second practice exam. So we are providing lots of opportunity for you to make sure that you get into that mind frame of how CPA is going to ask you questions, okay? You start to prepare yourselves for the examination. Now, we have a lot of people who say to us, yeah, I've, I've done my undergraduate studies, I've completed my degree. Why is it that I find it difficult to answer CPA exam questions? 
And the simple answer is that this is the first professional accounting designation exam that you have taken. So this is a little bit different from all of the different exams that you have taken in your past, okay? So we want to help you. We want to make sure that you are ready. So we provide all of these practice for you. Now we move on to mastery and tips for your examination success, okay? Mastery and tips for exam success. So is having a CPA after your name all that important? Yes, it is important because you get that piece of paper. But more than that, you actually need to know your stuff. Okay? And what is the meaning of knowing your stuff? That is mastery. Okay, So in, in Mandarin dialect, some people call it sifu, right? So how do you become a master? How do you become a sifu? You need to be able to master that knowledge. right? So what does mastery mean? That means you need to be able to apply the knowledge that's given to you. Okay, So yes, you have taken in all that knowledge. You have gone through learn. You have gone through practice. You have gotten your feedback. Now, how do you prove that you are a master? That is when you are able to apply all of that knowledge, right? Yeah, that's where you're able to apply all of the things that you have learned. Okay, so how do you start on getting that mastery process? First and foremost, it is most important that you need to know why you are learning that topic. Okay, without that, you're just a robot, right? So you need to know why you are pursuing this. Secondly, you need to attack your studies like a very valuable project. Now, not just in terms of the money that you have paid, but in terms of the time, in terms of the effort that you're going to put into pursuing this CPA program, okay? So it's not just about going along, it's about making sure that you have a strategy, you have a plan, and then you follow that plan, okay? And if it doesn't go so well, yeah, it's okay. It's disappointing, but it's fine. Reflect and make sure you make changes, okay? Now, if you don't make changes, you are just going to be repeating your mistakes. So don't repeat your mistakes. Make sure that you can go and progress in the next semester. Okay, so yes, we acknowledge that learning is not easy. Learning is difficult. However, learning should most certainly start with uncertainty. Okay, so if you already know something, you will not be uncertain, right? You'll be certain. So if you're learning, that means you're completely new. Don't worry if this is all foreign to you. It's natural. So you need to remember that's your baseline. You need to understand. So yes, okay, you remember that one plus one equals to two, but you need to understand why is it that one plus one equals two? Because if I've got one finger here, another finger here, I edit this side, it becomes two. Okay, now I understand. Next step, apply, analyze, evaluate, and then you are able to create. Okay, so when you have reached the top of that pyramid, that's when you have achieved that mastery level. And that's where we want you to be. We want you to be able to evaluate. We want you to be able to analyze. And we certainly want you to be able to apply those concepts that you need, okay? So exam preparation begins. And it's not just to survive, but you want to be able to thrive as well. And here is our number one tip for passing your CPA exam, okay? Firstly, you need to be able to know how to study, okay? So this was the part earlier that I mentioned that your lecturer asked me to cover, which is how to make sure that you understand your 700-page or your 900-page study guide. Yeah, I, I think financial reporting is 900 pages if I'm not wrong. So you need to make sure that you read it, you highlight the important sections, you answer the questions that are given to you. So it is very easy when you're studying at home to say, okay, um, yeah, this is a question I'm going to flip to the back and see what the answer is. However, that is not a very effective way of learning, okay? Test yourself. Answer every question in your head. Think about what the answer is and then go and look at the suggested answer because this way you are actually helping yourself to recall, okay, when I read this question, this is what I thought it should be and actually it was supposed to be something else. So don't cheat. It doesn't help. Yes, no one knows because you're on your own but it doesn't help you in the long run, okay? And last but not least, if you look at that picture on the screen, there is a lot of scribbling in the margins, okay? So yes, a lot of scribbling, and then you need to summarize. You create your own summary and bring it to the exam. 
Now, why is it so important to create that summary? It's because you need to know where to look for stuff, right? So yes, your textbook will be filled with lots of text and you, you label all the text where say, um, let's use the example of financial reporting, okay? Certain IFR standards and you tag that and you make a bunch of text, but you need to know what those tags mean to you, right? So you need to make sure that your summary when you're creating your own focuses on the learning objectives, okay? All of the different learning objectives and the reason why this is so is because if you ask any university professor, how do you invent or how do you create or how do you write a subject? It is always around the learning objectives, okay? So we, we have a bunch of learning objectives and we want to make sure that you understand all of their knowledge in order to reach that learning objective, okay? So make sure that you are creating your summary, focusing on each of those learning objectives. And then you have a major heading, one paragraph, one key point, one key point summarized into one sentence, and then that's your entire summary, okay? So I'm gonna use this example. This is from um, the 2019 version of our ENG study guide. And there's a whole bunch of text on the screen, right? Really tiny on your screen, so you can't see it, I don't blame you. But how do we summarize this? We want to make sure that we can reduce that 193 words into just 58 words, okay? So pull out your major heading, shorten that into one sentence, sorry, into one key point, and shorten that key point into one key sentence. And that is the summary that you create, okay? Now, when you are doing this, you are actually going through that whole step of analyze and, uh, and, and creating and interpreting and evaluating, right? Okay, so we want to make sure that you are able to do that, you are able to summarize, and that means that you are able to take in the knowledge understand it and then apply it, okay? So I've got a great question here that's come up. Um, it's it's from Nadia. So Nadia says, hi, um, can we bring our own printed notes into the exam? Um, can we bring printed notes if we scribble on them? Yes, absolutely, okay? You can bring in your notes even if you have scribble on them because remember I showed you that picture earlier, right? That study guide with all of the scribbles in the page, okay? So yes, you can scribble in your textbook you can scribble in your notes, you can bring it to the exam. No problem, okay? Nadia, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so moving on, indexing. Now, this is the part that was also asked um, by your lecturer on how we can, able, we can help you to do this. So the reason why we don't give you an index and we want you to create your own is because we want to make sure that you are not just skipping through the process. Right, it's, it's very easy for me to print it out and give it to you, right, one piece of paper. But then you wouldn't have gone through the process of actually understanding each of this content. You wouldn't have been able to go through the process of saying, oh, okay, um, this is altruism. This is self-interest. What exactly do these terms mean? Okay, so you create your own index, some key terms over there. So I mentioned self-interest and altruism. And yes, those are from page 19 of the textbook. That is the description and the definition, and that is the module in which it is used. Okay, so if you look at the slide in front of you, there is that key term and concept. There is that definition as well as that description. And there is, then there are, sorry, other comments and other special notes in terms of cross-referencing. Okay, so you need to create your own index. So good, another question has come out, how about writing our own notes? I, I think yes, that is the same as what I mentioned earlier. Not a problem, you can certainly write your own notes, you can certainly bring that into the examination, okay? So no problem with that. Um, thank you, YS, for that question. So some of you say that, okay, um, perhaps if I write a whole bunch of notes, I might be lost, or I might not know where to look for it. So some people say, okay, I want to make sure that I create my notes in a flowchart manner, or I want to create a mind map and see how each of those points link to each other. Okay, absolutely not a problem. Now, in adult education, we, we talk about this thing called andragogy, right? So pedagogy is for kids learning, andragogy is for adult learning. And we want to make sure that in this process, there are different learning styles that each person relates to. Okay, so my, my wife, for example, she likes to listen to audiobooks. So she learns a lot through auditory learning. I'm a very visual person. I like to be able to see all of the charts and graphics in front. 
Okay, so there is no one way that is better than the other. It is about asking yourself, which is the learning style that caters best to me? And I'm going to take responsibility for my own exam. I'm going to make sure that I answer those questions. Um, I'm answer those um, questions that I have about the content. I make sure they're going to answer and understand those concepts along the way. Okay. Yeah. So when in doubt, think of a tomato. Yes. I, I put this insight here just to make sure that I get your attention. So for those of you who are playing a game on your phone, watching TV, watching Netflix, this is just meant to get your attention. But yes, HBR article there, how to get uh, excited about topics that bore you, okay? So key points to get over it. Find the seat of motivation and it's perfectly normal to not understand something on your first try, okay? So don't be too hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up about it if this is something that you don't understand on the first try. It's perfectly okay. And that's the reason why we provide you so many opportunities to practice, okay? To rehearse, to make sure that you understand the concepts, to make sure that you can apply, okay? So you need to make sure that you are able to practice, apply, and not just once, right? If, if you can practice and apply just once, it might be by luck, right? It might be fluke, it might be taigo, right? That you happen to be able to do it. You must be able to do it over and over and over again. So the reason why we've used the image of a, of a pianist here is because if you think about it from the perspective of a performer in a concert, right? He or she should be able to perform at that same level of perfection night after night after night in every performance, right? So you need to make sure that you get to that level of mastery, okay? Where you are able to practice, apply, and do it over and over and over again until you reach that level of mastery, yeah? Okay, now we want to make sure that it is not just your technical abilities or your non-technical abilities that we are catering to. Okay, so a lot of people ask us, yeah, um, what is the difference between CPA Australia and this, that, and the other accounting designation. Now, all of us are professional accounting designations under the IFAC um, flag, under the IFAC rules and regulations, but I'm here to talk about CPA, right? I'm not here to talk about anyone else. So we want to make sure that, yes, your core capabilities of technical skills, problem solving, critical analysis, effective communication, all of that, yes, these are core capabilities, right? Very important. However, more than that, we want to make sure that you have that time management, you have that adaptive mindset, and you have that learning agility, okay? You have that learning agility. Now, um, this is a great question from someone by the name of Lopez who, who has brought this up. And it says, how does CPA Australia compare in terms of the content and resources that are provided compared to that of anyone else? Now, I always say that I'm not in the business of putting down any of my competitors. However, I will say to you that we have not been doing all of this digital learning and these digital resources only because COVID started up, okay? It's certainly not that way. We have been doing this for a long time. Um, from as far back as 2017, when I had a meeting in Sunway Test in the campus with you guys, they were already talking about moving into digital learning. And at that time, we already had my online learning, okay? So we have got loads of experience in this space and we make sure that we are developing not just your technical and non-technical capabilities. Now, I'll pull that one step further, okay? Maybe that is insufficient to convince you. That's okay. Now, how do we design each of these subjects? What we do is that it is not just a bunch of people who are sitting in an office who are saying, ah, yeah, okay, we'll design this because we think students need it, okay? It is not that way. And how we make sure that we set ourselves apart from other professional bodies is that all of our content is created by a bunch of people from the industry, okay? So practitioners who have real life, real working experience in the industry, academics who have got lots of experience in teaching the programs, and of course, we need to make sure that we are getting that feedback from people who are teaching the students, okay? So your practitioners, your teachers, your taught leader experts, and that is still insufficient, right? We're we lacking one more. We also bring in 
the government. Okay, We also bring in the regulators to make sure that when we are teaching something in Malaysia, it is relevant to the Malaysian market. So for example, when you study Malaysia tax in, in Sunway Test, this is something that CPA Australia recognizes. Okay, We want to make sure that that content is absolutely relevant to your career as an accountant. Okay, so I, I think all of the points that I mentioned over the past five minutes, Lopez, I hope that answers your question. That is how we set ourselves apart from any of our competitors in the market. Okay, now one more thing that I want to say is that all of these things that I've mentioned to you, the videos, the practice, the um, e-guide, the learning tasks, the case studies, all of these things are provided to you as part of your enrollment. Okay, You don't have to pay additional for it. We know that some of our competitors in the market, you pay for one fee for your exam, you pay one fee for your um, exemptions, you pay another fee for your assessment book, you pay another fee for your practice exam and stuff like that. Here, nah, not interested. You pay one fee and we give you everything. Okay, so that's how we ensure that as a student in Malaysia, what you are getting is exactly the same as any other student who is in Australia with us, who is in Singapore with us, or who is in China and all that, okay? Everybody gets the same level of resources, so you are not at a disadvantage regardless of where you are, okay? So the CPA program gives you the opportunity to acquire and develop both sets capabilities. Now, that is a key statement, okay? Not just your technical, but also non-technical capabilities, okay? Now, some lighter stuff, you need to make sure that you balance yourself, look after yourself, make sure that you get enough um, rest, make sure that you get enough sleep as well. Um, we, we completely understand that we exist in a world that was unimaginable 18 years, uh, 18 months ago, okay? Um, myself, as an example, I, I have not been in Singapore this long for this amount of time, okay, for one entire year. The last time I came back to Singapore was 13th of February, 2020. Um, I've been here now for one year and one month, and I could never imagine that I'll be in Singapore for this long a period of time, okay? I'm, I'm always traveling somewhere, I'm always working somewhere in a university campus or something like that, and it is a lot to take on. And I'm not saying that I'm the only one. A lot of you are struggling with a lot of these changes, okay? A lot of you are struggling towards these changes and we want to make sure that, you know, yes, it is difficult, but you need to make sure that you eat well, sleep well, get some, ex uh, get some exercise and of course, stay healthy as well, okay? So, want to make sure that yes, you prepare for your exams, you want to make sure that you are thoroughly prepared for your exams. And yes, there is no substitute to make sure that you have sufficient knowledge and successful understanding in order to go to the exam. So yes, I've said a lot of things. I've spoken quite quickly over the past 40 minutes or so, but you need to make sure that yes, CP Australia provides you all of that stuff. Yes, you, en you enroll with Sunway Test as a tuition provider, but you need to put in your effort, okay? You need to put in the hours yourself in order to be able to achieve that, okay? Um, yeah, so there, there is a follow-up question there. I'm talking about a bunch of different professional bodies in the market. Now, what I would say to you is that um, CPA Australia, in terms of our commitment okay, to Asia as a market, not just Malaysia, not just Singapore, but the entire scope of Asia, okay? Now, our commitment to this region has been more than 60 years. We have been in Singapore longer than Singapore has been called Singapore, okay? That is how long we have been involved in this market. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because we are completely committed to this, to this market, yeah? The first place that we came when we came out of Australia was Singapore. We've been here for more than 60 years. We've been in Malaysia for 60 years. We've been in Hong Kong for 60 years. More than 10,000 members in Singapore, about 10,000 members in Malaysia, about 20,000 members in Hong Kong and China. So in terms of our positioning in the market, we are certainly right up there. Now, how do we compare further with some of our competitors? Now, what I would like you to do is to think about your um, studies, right? You do your primary school, secondary school, you go through your undergraduate, master's, and then PhD, if you are an academic. Now, 
Our program is pitched at the Australia Qualification Framework because obviously we are from Australia. Um, and we are pitched at AQF level seven, AQF level eight. Now, what does this mean? Okay, your bachelor's degree is AQF level six. Your master's degree is AQF level eight. So that means that when you are doing your CPA program, you are actually studying at the master's level. Okay, and that's the reason why we have a very strict criteria of having that undergraduate degree as an entrance pathway, okay? So that is something that I think there are only three international accounting designations that continue to insist on that. And that's how we make sure that you are really at the top level, at the top level of your game, ready to enter the market at the master's level. So we don't take in students that are just diploma holders. We don't take in students that are midway through their studies. We want to make sure that you actually have that level. Okay, so I, I once again, I'm not going to be drawn into this conversation on how does this compare to a particular um, international accounting designation, but I'm here to tell you what CPA Australia has to offer you. Okay, so once again, this slide that I showed earlier, not just to survive, but also to thrive. And last but not least, I want to conclude with some exam information. Okay, so some mark allocation and your structure. So when you have all of your different subjects, okay, all of your different subjects available, um, when you take your subjects in Malaysia from ENG, financial reporting, etc., there are your MCQ questions, there are your MCQ with multiple option, extended response, and then your total marks over there, okay? So what exactly does this mean for you, okay? What exactly does MCQ mean? What exactly does multiple option mean? So MCQ, A, B, C, D, choose one. MCQ, multiple option, that means choose two of the following or select all of the following that apply, okay? And then expand extended response questions, okay? So extended response questions, that is um, ex expounding, right? Explaining a little bit more. So we are not trying to get from you an essay in a short time that you have in your examination. What we are trying to get from you is that understanding of that knowledge, that application of that knowledge. So it's okay if you write in short sentences. It's okay if you write in short phrases. Okay, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, however, you need to prove to the examiner that you understand, you can evaluate, and you can apply. Okay, so it goes back to that whole pyramid that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So what exactly is this MCQ multiple option? This is what it means. Yeah. Um, select all the following that apply. So the first three are correct and you make sure that you select all three of those options up there, okay? So yes, things can go wrong, but that is not enough, okay? You need to ask yourself what you can do to make sure that those things do not go wrong again in the future, okay? So your exam preparation, make sure that you plan and check your study progress, introduce your milestones, Make sure that you get your feedback from your lecturers at Sunway. Make sure that you stay on schedule. Make sure that you, you acquire and you develop your non-technical non skills. And make sure that you are an agile learner who is prepared to adapt. So remember I mentioned earlier, um, we had some questions around MCO last year, right? So we need to make sure that you are agile and you are prepared to adapt, okay? So we have some different policies. All those policies are all located on our website. I'm, I'm not going to go through that today. And we, of course, have a bunch of service touch points. But I think more importantly, if you have any issues, please make sure that you contact our Malaysia office. Make sure that you contact our colleagues, okay? So I'm done. This is what I've wanted to say. I'm going to pass the time over to the Malaysia team and they'll take it from there. Uh, I'm more than happy to stay on and take a few questions from you guys. Thanks, Theodore. Thanks, Theodore. That was a very good session. Very informative. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for tuning in into the session. We had Theodore from uh, our Singapore office. Of course, we work very closely with Theodore. 
But um, let's move on to some of the questions that some of y'all has addressed. Um, Lopez Jr., uh, thanks to you. In Malaysia, it seems like every student is cute. Squid tweets ACICW, we all know that, <laughs> which creates a massive imbalance in the market. Um, perhaps a professional body like CPU Australia should do more to ensure that such imbalance that's not continuously continue perpetually. What say you? All right. Look, I think as a uh, professional body, Michelle, uh, yeah. representing a professional qualification, I would say this to every one of y'all who is tuning in today. Look, uh, my perspective, so I am attached to uh, CP Australia Malaysia division. So we have an office in Malaysia. If you are considering to take up a professional qualification, I think it is very important for you to understand what is your need because one size doesn't fit all, all. right? One professional qualification may not suit everyone. But if you're looking for something that is fun, which is relevant in the current industry and in the current era that we are facing, I would say CP Australia is something that you can go for, right? If you're looking for an assurance that, you know, learning something after you have graduated and taking up a professional qualification that is relevant, that is something that you can apply when you are working, I would say CP Australia is a designation that you can go for. Why? We have subjects like you know global strategy and leadership. We have subjects like uh, contemporary business issues. Now, contemporary business issues addresses issues like, um, okay, you're talking about changes in the industry. You're talking about automation. You're talking about robotic uh, process automation. You're talking about cryptocurrency. All this is in this particular subject. So I can vouch to say that no other professional qualification can offer you that. So if you're looking for something that is relevant, current, and moving in the current industry that we are in, I would say CP Australia is the best platform for you. If you're looking for something that is beyond numbers, not your typical boring, you know, number crunching, typical accountant, you know, then the CP qualification is for you. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do we have more questions from the floor? It seems, um, yeah. Okay, I actually see there's one question uh, that, uh, what's the pass rate and why should I enroll with Summit Test? I would say um, Summit Test, we are quite proud with our passing rate. Uh, in average, uh, our passing rate is above uh, 60 uh, for, for average papers. Um, I think um, Tudor and Pris, you can actually, yeah, uh, agree with that. And yeah. so <clears throat> on top of, of what you are getting from the CPA Australia upon enrollment, you will also get the tuition from us, obviously, and also the additional notes and um, uh, consultation from our lecturers. Basically, our lecturers are very um, dedicated and they are there um, to help whenever you need it. Um, we actually have the, uh, what do you call the WhatsApp group, which each of the subject, each of the lecturer, they are there basically 24, I wouldn't say 24 hours or seven days, but whenever you need them, they are always there. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, to add on to what Michelle has spoken, I think um, every one of y'all who is tuning in today, I think what you need to understand about CP Australia is the kind of, I mean, the level of support that we give our candidates. And we are not about past year question, last year question, 2019 question. We don't function that way, right? And I can attest to say people who have been in CP Australia for the past 50 years, 
have not seen our questions, right? But mm -hmm. as long as, you know, uh, Theodore's presentation, you know, he mentioned about the resources, as long as you utilize the resources, you know, as long as you follow through the program in the way that you are supposed to follow through, you will ace the exams. I think uh, that's the best thing I can tell any one of you. Don't worry about past year questions. Don't go to Sunway Test and ask them for past year questions. Past year questions. <laughs> yeah, because I think yeah. we are firm believers to, you know, yeah. attest to, you know, CP Australia is not about memorizing and vomiting. That's why yeah. we're open book exam for you to actually refer to important things that matters. We don't expect our candidates to memorize and vomit. So I think that is a great uh, differentiation in terms of a professional qualification as compared to the others. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I completely uh, agree with what uh, Prish and Michelle have said here. Now, uh, allow me to address a few of the points that they have shared. Um, firstly, ar around the examination results, um, I'm the person who chases after Michelle every semester to make sure that she submits uh, all of the CPA IDs and gives me the results, okay? So I can attest that, you know, in terms of the results, yes, um, the students do tend to do better than the Malaysia national average. Um, of course, you know, we look forward to being able to do that semester after semester. Um, and we recognize the efforts of the lecturers in doing that. Now, the other portion that uh, Prashini mentioned earlier in terms of what makes us different, um, in, in, in terms of the employers, now, the reason why I mention employers is because all of you want to make sure that you have good jobs, right? So we talk to the employers and we say to them, yeah, okay, so you have employed this student who has joined you with the CPA designation. How does this student compare with a student from another accounting designation? And we're very proud that, you know, it, oftentimes the feedback that comes back is that these students who come out with the CPA, they are market ready, okay? They are ready to enter the market. They are ready to enter the workforce. And this is great. This is extremely good value for the employers because now they know that they don't have to release you early to go to school. They don't have to pay for your studies. They don't have to lose you in terms of your concentration because you already have your professional designation. So in terms of finding a better job, that is great, right? That, that is something that you are able to sell yourself on your resume to say that, hey, look here, particular company, I'm applying here for a job, but I already have all of the technical knowledge. Now I'm ready full-time to join your company and I'm ready to work and I'm already equipped with all of that knowledge to be able to apply, right? So I mentioned earlier that whole thing about application and analysis, and that is exactly what Prashini was trying to say, right? It's not just about testing you and asking you to regurgitate and just, just copy and paste. Now, anybody who can see, can read, and can write, can copy and paste, right? But we want to make sure that you can apply as well, okay? So we, we we're trying to change the perception of an accountant, right? We're trying to change the perception of what it means to be an accountant. And we're very pleased to say that when we do things like our annual congress, we don't just have accountants who are coming to talk. We have people who are astronauts, like legit been to the moon astronauts, we have people who are leaders of, um, let me see, the former US Fed chairman, Federal Reserve chairman. He was a speaker at one of our recent conferences. Okay, So these are the people whom we associate with, not just the image that you have in your head of a boring accountant. Now, allow me to answer two more questions that have popped up. Um, firstly, from someone called Razif, out of curiosity, has anyone enrolled in more than six subjects? Now, the, the, that is an important question and that's a great question. And the answer is yes, okay? There are people who enroll into more than six subjects. However, however, that is not part of their CPA program, okay? So they take those six subjects, yes, they qualify as a CPA, and later on, as they progress in the course of their career, they find that, oh, this particular elective is going to be useful for me. I'm going to take that as part of my professional development, okay? So yes, there are people who enroll in more than six, However, not part of their CPA program studies. Um, another question by Raymond, which elective subject is recommended? Now, that really depends on what you're trying to do, okay? So I've spent more than 10 years in academia, um, working in different universities from Cornell to NTU, etc. Um, and this is the same advice that I give to people 
whether they are evaluating an MBA or whether they are evaluating indeed an accounting subject. Now, go to our website and look at not just the subject title, right? The subject title is just two or three words, um, say contemporary business issues. The three words don't tell you anything, right? Contemporary, okay, current business, yeah, business environment, issues, what are the issues faced? But it does not give you enough depth, right? Just those three words. However, what we have on our website is you are able to see, okay, in CBI, what is covered? What are the learning outcomes? What are we trying to do through each module, okay? So, um, Razif actually added on a follow-up question. Now, fantastic, we have a conversation going. Um, which subject is recommended for someone who's working in advisory and corporate finance? Now, all of our subjects are related to the industry of finance and accounting, okay? So, it really depends what exact function you're doing. Um, advisory and corporate finance is very, very broad. However, of course, we have a subject called AAA. Right, so advanced audit and assurance, so that is clearly targeted at audit people. Financial reporting is a core subject and you don't really get to choose. Okay, so you have four core subjects. Everyone will take those same four core subjects and then you just choose two electives, okay? Um, Sunway Test offers a large number of our electives that are relevant to the market, so that is fantastic. Um, however, please look at the different subjects, look at the subject breakdown and then decide is this the subject that you want to pursue? All right, so Razif, Raymond, thank you for fantastic questions. I hope that answers it for you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I think just to add on, uh, Michelle, yeah. sorry, just to add on to uh, that particular questions that was uh, posted up by Mio. Uh, Mio, I think you sound very familiar. I think you are a current member. <laughs> I seem to yes. remember your name or seen your name somewhere. <laughs> So, uh, no, I mean, uh, your question was out of courtesy. Has anyone enrolled more than six subjects? For the CP Australia program, in a semester, you can only enroll up to three subjects in a particular semester. So, if you are in SEM 1, 2021, you can only enroll up to three subjects. And yes, we do have candidates enrolling up till three subjects, especially on the full-time program, right? Other than that, it is up to you to decide, you know, the number of subjects that you want to enroll into. But if you are working, I will never give you that suggestion to enroll into three subjects. <laughs> no, I think yeah. it's a nightmare. So for working uh, adults who are currently working, Normally, we will tell them, you know, one subject per semester, but we also have candidates taking up up to uh, two subjects, right? And Mio, your second question, in terms of a recommended for someone who is working in advisory and corporate finance role, um, I've dealt with members who are in this particular role, and usually the elective that they take is uh, financial risk management and contemporary business issues. They never take audit and tax. <laughs> Usually people in your current role, uh, Mio, they will take uh, financial risk management and contemporary business issue. Yeah, okay. just to add so, on. We have, we have another question from Emily um, asking, yeah. okay, once you've completed all of your CPA papers, how many years of working experience do you need? Um, so you need to have three years of working experience, uh, 36 months, right? Must it yep. be from a CPA recognized firm or company? Um, it is strongly encouraged. However, we know that that is not always possible. So it's okay if you work for a company that is not recognized by CPA. Um, however, you need to get someone who is a qualified accountant to be able to sign off on your experience, okay? So yeah. someone who has got actual working experience and holds an actual accounting designation um, with any of the big international accounting designations, and however, if you find difficulty in finding someone like that, get in contact with our Malaysia office. We will be able to put you in touch yeah. with a member who will be able to certify for you and say, okay, um, this person has done this work, has done this particular job for this particular number of months or this particular number of years. And he or she has been able to prove that he has these skills um, to achieve that work experience. Yeah. Okay, so not necessary to be a CPA firm. Yeah? Sure. So just to add on to your point, Emily, for CP Australia, we do not restrict 
our candidates to be working with our recognized partners. So some professional bodies, they limit you to that. For CP Australia, we do not, because we understand that, you know, everybody's needs are a bit more different. So you can work with whoever you want to work with, but as long as you fulfill the four core knowledges that we require, and as long as that person who signs off is governed under IFAC, they can be professional qualifi qualified from any other professional body. And if you have a struggle finding that, we will be more than happy to assist you in any ways that we can, Emily. Yeah. So don't worry so much about that. And uh, actually, you know, we are happy to share our phone numbers with you, Emily. Uh, reach out to Sanvitas. I hope, uh, Michelle, do we have a slide to show our numbers? Oh yeah, there, Michelle just shoot it out. So you have uh, Michelle's uh, email address and my email address. Actually, once you know uh, our email address, uh, you will see our phone number and we're happy to WhatsApp you anytime. Michelle, I think there's a question for you from Raymond. Can I know if Sunrit has offered contemporary business issue? Jang, jang, jang. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, not at the moment. Uh, we only offer um, advanced audit and assurance and Malaysia tax, but uh, that will be in our consideration. Okay, right. Um, so, do we have any more questions from the floor? Because it seems that we have over, um, overtake the, the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if there's not... Yeah. I uh, think Michelle, maybe can we just run, uh, run our email addresses down there so people can take a screenshot? So, if yeah. they have any questions, they can reach out to us. So, yeah. uh, guys, don't worry. You can dial in to the Malaysian office. You know my name. Mm. My name is there. If you have any questions, just say you want to speak to Prishini and the call will be directed to me. No worries. Any questions at all, we'll be more than happy to answer you. You can also reach out to Michelle if you have yeah. any questions regarding CP Australia or Sunway Test. We work very closely. So I think uh, we're here to support each other and also help you guys, you know, to do the best. Yeah. I think this um, tonight's um, session is actually very good and very interesting, <laughs> very informative. Um, you know, would you consider to do it again? <laughs> No problem. You can give me two you hours no on top as well. Say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably we can. Yeah, we can consider this um, session, you know, for another yeah. time. And yeah, for those who miss this, you know, or you guys who attended this session and find it informative, please share it out to your friends. And when we have the, another session, we'll let you know. And please invite your friends to come in as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a um, recorded session. You can go to uh, Sanvita's Facebook. The Facebook. video will be there. Please yeah. share it with all your friends who are going to take the exams in April. Share yeah. the knowledge with them. Yeah. Get everyone yeah. to use the online resources. That's yes. your best bet of scoring a HD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and they should do that because otherwise I'll be asking Michelle why Sanvita is still Yeah. And... So it has students out there. I know you are here tonight. Please go and make full use of the, the online resources. Okay. All right. So thank you very much, Tudo. Thank you very much, Preach. I think um, we can uh, end tonight's session. Yeah. So have a good night, everybody. Stay thank safe. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank Be you, safe. everyone. Thanks for spending your time with us. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. See you guys.